Welcome, LA Progressive friends and family and readers. Today, it's just me, Sharon. I'm going to be talking to you about a piece that I wrote in the LA Progressive. Um, this is the day following the day that President Biden voluntarily chose to drop out of the presidential race. So I decided to write a quick piece about something that a lot of people really aren't talking about, and that is, are you registered to vote? So um, almost immediately after Joe Biden voluntarily chose to drop out of the presidential race, uh, and then he uh, endorsed President Com uh, for Vice President Kamala Harris, the game changed. So there, were, there was a call and um, close to 45,000 black women participated in a call that helped to raise uh, over $81 million for the Harris campaign in less than 24 hours. So this news seems to have infused the party with renewed energy, at least for now. Now, whether or not Kamala Harris becomes the official nominee of the Democratic Party, Biden's departure makes Trump the oldest presidential candidate in the history of the United States. Now, this factoid is not inconsequential. The age factor was one of the most discussed topics during this presidential season and clearly impacted Biden's decision to leave. Every year, approximately 4 million Americans reach the voting age. And what this means for this year is that approximately 16 million more people will have the opportunity to vote in the presidential election for the first time in November. Polls have shown that the age of the candidates is one of the many factors that affect this race, and especially that affect younger voters. So in a contest that will be so narrowly decided, we all know that the most recent presidential elections have been very narrowly decided. The age factor alone, if Harris is at the top of the ticket, is most likely going to put the Democrats in a better position. So although talking heads all over the airwaves keep reminding us that we have four months until November the 5th, with all the potential new voters, we should place more emphasis on voter registration and the deadlines associated with those registrations instead of continuing to focus entirely on November the 5th. New voters need to be made aware that they've got a lot less time than they think. And to make matters more complicated, each state and territory has its own election rules, resulting in lots of different deadlines. For example, in California, the last day to register to vote in the November 5th general election is October the 21st. Now, that's true for those people who intend to vote online or to vote by mail, and also to vote in person. They have until October the 21st. But we have a new rule in California that people who show up in person on November the 5th that haven't registered can register right then and there and do what is called a provisional vote. So they will cast their votes provisionally. And that has that's a whole nother bale of wax that I'm not gonna go into. But what I am gonna recommend is that people find out what their deadlines are. Every state has a different deadline. Like I said, California's is October the 21st. Alaska's last day to register to vote in the general election is October the 6th. Each state has different rules. Not all states have this uh, same day registration, uh, registering provisionally. Not all states have that rule. But you can find out where you stand by going to the United States Election Assistance Commission. That's EAC.gov. And EAC, which stands for Election Assistance Commission, EAC.gov, that website gives registration information for every single state and territory. Now, uh, we generally don't talk a lot about the territories. We're, we're talking about Guam. We're talking about the District of Columbia. We're talking about voters abroad, which brings up another topic. When you talk about young people, there are a lot of people that are enrolled in colleges, colleges that are outside of the states where they uh, normally live. Well, they need to know you can't be registered in both places. You can only legally be registered in one location. And you can register in the area where you attend school and then you vote online. 
But all of this information is made clear at the um, EAC website and also at every single Secretary of State website. Um, California Secretary of State has a, does a great job. So there are two overarching groups of young people who may be moved to show up at the polls. And maybe they weren't going to show up when Biden was in. But if Kamala Harris is elected to be the Democratic uh, presidential nominee, she might be able to reach these two groups of young people. There are those who felt cut off and outside, out as outsiders, in part because of the candidate at the top of the ticket. It's kind of hard for people to relate to an 81-year-old candidate. And then there are those who were involved, but were extremely upset and very angry about the position that Biden took, his stance on Gaza. And I can't say I blame them. But depending on the way that Harris handles Gaza and whether or not she reaches out um, to colleges and young people who have just turned 18, she can make a big difference. Thank you for joining me and hope to see you again in the near future. So long. Thank you for sticking around. If you like the LA Progressive content and the discussions we have here, please consider clicking the subscribe button below and also give us a thumbs up. That helps to grow our audience by feeding the algorithm, which helps to get this content in front of more eyes. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate your support.